In a world where dreams meet reality, there exists a place where your business can flourish. That place is Shopify. Imagine having the power to craft your online store with tools that make it as easy as a gentle breeze. Whether you're an artisan of handmade wonders, a creator of digital treasures, or a curator of the latest trends, Shopify stands by your side. With its customizable templates, seamless integrations, and support that's always there, your dream store is just a heartbeat away. Join millions of visionaries around the globe and let Shopify guide you on your journey. Visit roguemedianetwork.com slash Shopify. That's roguemedianetwork.com slash S-H-O-P-I-F-Y. And embark on your free trial. Shopify, where your commerce dreams come to life. You just found the perfect product that helps with staying cool during hot summer runs. No more gross warm water. Stay cool with this product from Gear Handle. This hydration tube cover helps keep your water cool and easily accessible. Stay hydrated during those long summer runs or even delay from freezing in the winter. Plus, they're compatible with various brands of water bladders and come in various colors. Visit GearHandle.com and use promo code H2O today. Rachel Ruth Tate, and this is Text Astrology. Hello and good day to everybody out there listening. Rachel Ruth here, and welcome, welcome once again to the Text Astrology Podcast. In this episode of the show, we are talking about the full moon in Pisces, happening on Saturday, September 10th, at exactly 5 a.m. Central Standard Time at 17 degrees of Pisces. Pisces is the 12th and last sign in the zodiac, Jupiter's yin home sign of mutable water, represented by dual fish. All water element signs deal in the felt and sensed and flexible Pisces can feel and sense it all, the whole of potentiality. Its traditional ruler Jupiter, our greater benefic, or common good, is father among gods and has dominion over such high-order things as philosophy, virtuosity, spirituality, and learned wisdom. Those abstract goods can be sought out, as Jupiter's young sign Sagittarius does through travel, play, passion, discovery, or they can be received, as Yin Pisces does by way of intuition, meditation, divination, and direct knowledge. While Jupiter, one of our benefics, may rule Pisces, our other benefic, Venus, has exaltation rulership of Pisces, which in reveals something about the very nature of the good. This last sign, watery Pisces, this final zodiacal wave of felt and sensed truth and connection is where Venus, goddess of beauty and love, does her very best work. Fortunately for us, this lunar cycle, the moon also enjoys inherent power in Pisces, as the moon is one of three classical triplicity rulers of water signs. After all, the light of the moon reflects very well off of the face of the water, does it not? Nature's mirror. And the moon itself is essentially our personal, inner mirror. We ourselves physically are comprised of 60 plus percent water. Cancer, the moon's own home sign, is itself the cardinal water sign representing directional water flow, a.k.a. the essential ingredient for all of life itself. This full moon, however, is in Pisces, not in Cancer, and is ruled by Jupiter and not by itself. But that watery potential for felt sense reflection remains. And the moon being full at 17 degrees of Pisces, it happens inside one of Jupiter's own little power pockets, 
Chaldean Deccans, or faces. I won't burden you with the technical minutia of that, but you can think of Deccans as locations of 10 degrees size within the 30 degree span of any given zodiac sign. So each sign has three, 10 degrees, 30 degrees in each sign that have special resonance with a planet or a luminary in addition to its sign-based rulers. So the full moon is there midway through Pisces, right in the thick of the waves, and it's ruled by beneficent Jupiter hanging out in the best room in the Pisces house, its second Jupiter-ruled Deccan. This immediately expands this lunation's potential and demands further contemplation to understand the nature of the bounty we will be receiving from on high. What wisdom comes our way? And that's why we are going to shift our focus to this syzygy's ruler itself. How is Jupiter, the ruler of this lunation by sign, how is it doing where it is in the zodiac? The quality of a moon cycle can also be spoken to by the condition of its ruler in the sky at the time of the lunation. Well, right off the bat, we see it is retrograde at five degrees Aries. Jupiter is retrograde at five degrees Aries. So whatever wisdom we are receiving from this moon in Pisces, it is precisely in that reflection we spoke to earlier. Retrogrades inevitably mean reconsideration and review. In this case, in Aries, the cardinal fire sign ruled by Mars, we will be reviewing the endeavors that we have initiated and the Jupiterian philosophical belief and purpose that undergird and inspire our efforts in that direction. Jupiter has power and strength in the first six degrees of Aries. It enjoys nighttime triplicity rulership there, definitely in play during the full moon, and it is in its own Egyptian term. Another special power-up available, like a Deccan, but of varying lengths and from another system, the Egyptian term. And that's what you get for studying ancient arts, lots of systems to pull from. Anyway, just know it's got this fair amount of dignity here retrograde at five degrees of Aries. It's a dignified Jupiter that's moving backwards almost like a military retreat in order to regroup, strategize, heal, and reprovision, which are all good and prudent things to do under the right circumstances. Well, know that this full moon in Pisces provides the right circumstances to initiate and engage brand new healing and transformation. Through honest reflection and compassionate contemplation, we can all better understand how we came to face our current challenges, their meaning within the context of our life journey, and how we may improve through change and amendment of our previous patterns, pivoting away from some things and people and towards others, others that we feel are better investments and in greater alignment with our personally held values and life callings. That is just, well, being true to yourself. Add in a zippy sextile, a soft 60-degree aspect of the unionizing nature of Venus. Add in a sextile from the full moon at 17 degrees Pisces to Uranus, still at 18 degrees Pisces, and we will likely get us a little gift of some sort, like the right nudge to passion a shock to the system that brings us to presence, a change to the status quo that beautifies your sphere. Whatever it is, expect a bit of a sweet, strange something to pop up in relationship to the revelations and course changes that the full moon in Pisces brings. The next connection the full moon will make with another body after the lunation is a conjunction with dreamy Neptune god of the primordial sea, hanging out later at 25 degrees of Pisces. It takes Neptune 165 years to head around the zodiac completely. So Neptune has been in the spacious waters of Jupiter's yin Pisces for a while. 
This presents an opportunity to channel your creativity and imagination through the vessel of yourself. Remember, the moon does have a correspondence with the beauty and care of the body because contact with connective Neptune right after an aspect with disruptive Uranus, let's just say that can be incredibly artistically productive and emotionally cathartic. Think spiritual awakening and breakthrough sort of energy. Make art, make love, do ritual, do ceremony, dream journal, meditate, pray, dance, you get the vibe. Let the apex of this lunar cycle that next morning be the reawakening that it wants to be for you in whatever way it comes out. With Pisces, let it be fluid and organic. Maybe intuitive is even a better word to use. Water signs, especially Pisces, are classically associated with intuition and the subtlest of felt sense perception. Listen this full moon. Listen that whole full moon weekend, Friday to Sunday. Listen to yourself and acknowledge and witness each arising inner sensation, whether it be a thought or a feeling, and perhaps follow it to where it is leading you. Pisces is known for its psychic mystic abilities, that final sign, and a full moon here means the veil between the beginning and the end of things is thin. It's a good time to notice all that is not random around you and feel deeply into the richness of the meaning and pattern of the present moment. And that is where the healing is too, in the now and in the change we can make when we put our whole souls behind it. Because the world because we ourselves, because life itself is worth every effort. Where will you be feeling that synchronous tide rise in your own life? Let's jump into this new moon's, this new moon, let's jump into this full moon's meaning for each sign. To repeat myself, I like to use rising signs. They give the horoscope of lived experience. Sun or moon signs can be used as well. Use astro.com or your favorite app to cast your chart using your exact birth time. Now, this cycle for all 12 signs. Aries. Shocking abundance releases anxiety. Taurus. Personal breakthrough inspires hope. Gemini. Self undoing allows leadership. Cancer. Changing goals can evolve. Leo. Public change pollinates privately. Virgo. Higher experience informs reality. Libra. Up-leveling intimacy benefits daily. Scorpio. Relational innovation stimulates creatively. Sagittarius. Transforming routines potentiates healing. Capricorn. Novel pleasure enhances environment. Aquarius, renovating roots, refines possessions. Pisces, altering surroundings, refreshes identity. Let the horoscope soak in and let's take a quick break for a word potentially from our sponsors. You just found the perfect product that helps with staying cool during hot summer runs. No more gross warm water. Stay cool with this product from Gear Handle. This hydration tube cover helps keep your water cool and easily accessible. Stay hydrated during those long summer runs or even delay from freezing in the winter. Plus, they're compatible with various brands of water bladders and come in various colors. 
Visit GearHandle.com and use promo code H2O today. Hello again, everybody. Now we will turn our attention from the upcoming lunar cycle to my top three planetary transits to watch for over the next two weeks. One, Mercury retrograde opposes Jupiter retrograde on Sunday, September 18th at 5.53 p.m. Central Standard Time from 4 degrees of Libra to 4 degrees of Aries. We have not had occasion to speak to planetary oppositions much since the inception of this podcast. The sky has been super active, so though these opposition transits have been happening, with only three transits to cover in this program, I have elected to shelve those in favor of sign changes and retrograde stations lately. Well, this lunar cycle is a little more relaxed than those in the recent past, but while we have a bit of a breath of fresh air, a nice respite from the crushing of the fixed sign grinder that we have been experiencing, we have a Mercury-Jupiter opposition, that 180-degree aspect of facing down. And it is not simple. It does make for some boisterous relating. Mercury rules our minds, thoughts, expressions, and messages. And Jupiter is that social benefic expander and is our higher education. When both are retrograde and Mercury is in social Libra, with Jupiter in brash Aries, we can definitely get a loudmouth energy going on forced conversations, shit-talking, the truth as a blunt instrument, and it can be a big blow to our relationships. Remember, beautiful Venus, who rules our loving relationships, she is currently in Virgo, the sign of her fall, meanwhile, and Venus in Virgo finds fault with her critical eye. Perhaps our partners, family, friends, colleagues are even irritating us. And when Mercury is opposed to a feisty Jupiter and ruled by such a particular Venus, you might even say it's bound to go down. That relational stress, which we can usually take with a deep breath, may instead show through, instigating emotional reactions and intense conversations that we are usually untroubled by. Now let's step back and flip the script. Mercury-Jupiter retrograde and opposed in Libra and Aries can also be very creative tension. We can use this new conversational boldness to really initiate and gain insight if we can boldly own what is ours and remain resiliently open to feedback and self-improvement. Usually those smart remarks and fighting words others give to us, especially if they know us and if they love us, they have some small grain of truth. So the messenger may may lack tact, especially in this sort of a case, but we are the ones who get to do the honorable work of self-inquiry and undertake the brave task of being vulnerable to just such feedback. It will help that Mars how we do, right? Mars is how we do, how we act and make happen. Mars is trining Mercury retrograde in Libra by sign and sextiling Jupiter retrograde in Aries by sign, soft angles from Gemini, where it itself is getting ready to station and head backwards as well. There will be a lot to talk about with this sort of arrangement, a lot to sort out, a lot to verbalize, and plenty of time to do it. Mars will be retrograde until March of 2023. So Mars is in Gemini and Venus in Virgo. Those can also help Mercury in Libra and Jupiter in Aries make a plan. When we have a good plan, perhaps along with good coping strategies and relief mechanisms, 
we can implement the changes we wish to make and initiate the evolutionary forward motion we like to see in all areas of our lives. So get your toolkit set up with this Mercury-Jupiter opposition. Maybe it's cognitive behavioral therapy. Maybe it's breath work. Maybe it's yoga or stretching. Maybe it's meditation. Maybe it's medication. Maybe it's mantra work. Maybe it's a trainer. Maybe it's a creative outlet. Maybe it's a safe word. Maybe it's a safe space. Maybe it's a savings account. Maybe it is therapy. Maybe it's cleaning. Maybe it's a proactive conversation. Maybe it's a pros and cons list. Maybe it's just thinking out multiple possibilities and predetermining what your responses will be practicing so you don't have to react to the choice emotionally in the moment. You get it. Tool up and prepare with the practices and precautions and outlets that will best set you up for success because we can boldly go where we haven't gone before in our relationships with this arrangement. In fact, we will. So don't let Mercury and Jupiter's retrograde opposition scare you. These oppositions happen all the time. But do be patient with mouthy people and gentle with those hot under the collar. And forgive yourself if you succumb to the heat. And use the time to explore the frontiers inside yourself and your relationships, being a pioneer of personal development and instigator of unparalleled honesty and intimacy. You won't regret it. Second transit. The sun enters Libra on Thursday, September 22nd at 7.58 p.m. Central Standard Time, ushering in the autumnal equinox just six minutes later. The sun will remain in Libra until October 23rd. An equinox marks the time when the plane of the Earth's equator passes through the geometric center of the sun's disk, or apparent disk, and the Earth's axis is perpendicular to the sun. This is a midpoint of physical sorts between the summer and winter solstice, between the extremes of axial tilt, when both hemispheres are experiencing days and nights of approximately equivalent length. But for the Northern Hemisphere, the birthplace of Hellenistic astrology, the days will only get shorter. Following the equinox, the sun drops to the south and the Southern Hemisphere begins to enjoy their seasonal equivalent of fruiting spring while we slide into decaying autumn. For this reason, among others, the sun itself is fallen in Libra. Libra is the seventh sign in the zodiac, the cardinal air sign ruled by personal benefic Venus, in which social malefic Saturn actually experiences its exaltation. Libra is the scales. It is the only machine to be a zodiacal symbol. And for that reason, too, the vivifying qualities of the sun struggle here. (laughs) Libra is the ascetic and relational ideal perfect peace, total equanimity, objective pleasure. And those things don't per se exist in living form. Symmetry is a theory and the universe is exquisite in its regular quirks. But these scales must weigh what's on them. As so, the sun in Libra must do what all air elements do and speak, communicate, relate, measure even, like the scales do, to know itself and be known. Just as comparison is the thief of joy, the sun in Libra has to process its own essence externally, which is often complicated and imperfect in execution. Note the tendency to want to please people during the sun in Libra transit, and be sure none of your own essence or integrity is lost in the avoidance of conflict. Libra likes everyone to be happy, and we can't usually make everyone happy. Even if we can, we might be compromising our own enjoyment of life in the process. 
Conflict resolution at its core is a loving thing. Venus and Saturn's commonality. The responsibility of stewarding love is a big one. The honoring of commitment and the dedication to the actual work of balancing. And there is sacrifice here. It's echoed in the death and dying we see of nature around us. For life to exist, death must as well. It's beautiful and terrible and true. The old fertilizes and creates the new, which will recreate itself over and over again in successive unions over all time. Venus and Saturn once more. Libra's rulers. During the month the sun spends in Libra, pay great attention to your heart and relate to others with pure intention. Venus, here in her air sign, wishes to harmonize and connect, to engage and philosophize, to make art and magic and friendship and love. And while the sun occupies this territory, expect your desire to take on those qualities. And remember, Mercury is here in Libra too, about to cross the threshold into Virgo the very next day. So emphasis on rethinking rewording, self-editing. Take great care in forming your words and consider carefully the way you wish to verbalize yourself surrounding those relationships. This celestial territory in early Libra will be active and we are likely to feel the effects of our own relational ups and downs very keenly down to our life force. Arguments and emotional distress will literally tire us At the very least, relationship drama will vex us when it pops up. In this moment, and all month long while the sun is in Libra, take some immortal advice from Philippians 4.8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Third transit. Mercury retrograde re-enters Virgo on Friday, September 23rd at 7.09 a.m. Central Standard Time. Having spoken to this just a moment ago, I'm glad to go deeper into what Mercury has in store for us in Virgo, our mutable earth sign represented by the Virgin. So Mercury, the messenger god, delivers messages best in the sign of Virgo, which is both its yin domicile and sign of exaltation. Basically, it absolutely rules. Nowhere does Mercury do Mercury better than in Virgo. The information that the universe has sent is always well received. So what does it mean for Mercury to move backwards, to move retrograde here in its space of ultimate power? Well, let's just say if things are going awry, if scheduling mishaps are happening, if the kids are having problems, if technology is on the fritz, if miscommunication is occurring, if calculation errors are made, all very Mercury retrograde issues, if all of those shenanigans are taking place as they will do. It's, it's good to have Mercury and Virgo on the job. You want the cleanup crew to be thorough and mental reorientation to reality to be deft and seamless in the face of change. Mercury and Virgo is a tool if we know how to use it. Instead of resenting our minor setbacks or becoming exhausted by inconveniences, see this Mercury retrograde in Virgo as an opportunity to be resilient to serve others during times of stress, to challenge yourself to meet the questions with answers, well-considered and formed with at least as much depth and precision as the situation allowed. Mercury in Virgo has plans A, B, C, and is ready to make more if needs be. It is a survivor and a problem solver. But let us not forget We aren't just working with standard issue Mercury in Virgo. We are working with Mercury slowing down and stationing direct opposite Neptune. Brain fog. Daydreams. Head in the clouds. Taken by the currents at best. 
Neptune also represents illusion and delusion. So keep your wits about you as best you can and be mindful not to miss signs that you're being taken in or that things aren't all as they seem. Red flags. High strangeness isn't always worth getting involved with in whatever form. This adroit Mercury is in power and it's retrograde. Dreamy Neptune is in its favorite sign and it's retrograde. Their backward moving opposition is a mirror and Neptune fogs up mirrors. You may not be seeing what you think you see. It is in just these conditions that people may find themselves engaged in forms of sensationalism, occultism, or intoxication that will invariably cloud their view of reality. This Mercury-Neptune opposition may also have people in the mood to compulsively form groups or assemble. Remember, Pisces and Virgo are mutable and unbounded. This can be mystical or this can be terrifying, depending on the nature of the gathering. Merging with anyone and everyone doesn't always turn out well, especially if they aren't who you thought they were. If it sounds too good to be true, if all of your dreams seem to come true at once, wait a bit and see if it smells fishy. It probably does. And with that final caution, I would now love to transition and summarize the upcoming quality of time for y'all. So the next couple of weeks, this lunar cycle will be relational, strange, expansive, spiritual, and evolutionary. Let those words wash over you, and let's flow into some simple do's and don'ts for this lunar cycle. Do be open to new states of mind and heart and acknowledge arising sensations with curiosity and quality attention. Don't get bamboozled by inner chaos or taken in by anyone outside playing a role in creating that confusion. Do enjoy social gatherings in the cooler weather and attend positive public events with like-minded people. Don't neglect home and family in pursuit of social goals or join forces with any fringe elements who make you compromise who you are. Do think carefully and be intentional as you encounter issues and engage your problem-solving abilities. Don't get stuck in anxious cycles of rumination and compulsion as you're waiting for the storm of a challenge to pass. And that wraps up this full moon in Pisces edition of the show. Stay open, at ease, and alert as we navigate the next two weeks of this upcoming lunar cycle. Until next time, friends. That's it for this episode, folks. Meet me here every full and new moon for more cosmic wisdom. For now, you can find me on Instagram at Rachel Ruth Tate and at Text Astrology or between the pages of my book, Meditations on Being, available on Amazon and wherever else you purchase books. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. In a world where dreams meet reality, there exists a place where your business can flourish. That place is Shopify. Imagine having the power to craft your online store with tools that make it as easy as a gentle breeze. Whether you're an artisan of handmade wonders, a creator of digital treasures, or a curator of the latest trends, Shopify stands by your side. With its customizable templates, seamless integrations, and support that's always there, your dream store is just a heartbeat away. Join millions of visionaries around the globe and let Shopify guide you on your journey. Visit roguemedianetwork.com slash Shopify. That's roguemedianetwork.com slash S-H-O-P-I-F-Y. And embark on your free trial. Shopify, where your commerce dreams come to life.